Hey guys, even here, so Arnold Classic finally decided to post an official list of competitors and damn, this is a good freaking list. And yeah, surprise, surprise, Hari Chopin is in, he's doing the show. Am I surprised? Really? No, not even one bit. Everybody pretty much knew this, we all expected it, there were rumors everywhere about this, and it makes total sense. I mean, he just lost the Mr. Olympia and lost those $400,000 that he was probably expecting, so what better way to make redemption but by winning the Arnold Classic, which is also a really big freaking title, you know, second best in the world, and also it's gonna grant him $300,000. So, yeah, I think it was pretty obvious that he was gonna do it so this is gonna be Samson Dauda versus Hari Chopin show who do I think is gonna win I'll tell you a little bit later but I can tell you right now it's gonna be a really good battle now as far as the rest of the lineup you have last year's Arnold Classic amateur winner we have James Hollins head who took an entire year off and is working with Milo Sharchev now so I'm expecting a big improvement from uh, James and I think he's gonna probably end up in that top five top six of course, Samson Dauda, last year's champ and very possibly winner of this show too. Akin Williams, coming back from his shoulder surgery, he lost a lot of his gains, but he's coming back. Uh, Anton Voyant is also doing this show, Mohamed Shaban, Rafael Brandau, he was 10th at the Mr. Olympia, so this guy will probably be in the top 5. Horse MD also top 5, top 6 material if you ask me, John De La Rosa is competing, uh, Justin Rodriguez, Hari Chopin probably the favorite, I mean definitely the favorite to win this show, Andrew Jack uh, who is probably gonna be in that top 3, do I see him winning this show? Not without an off season, he's gonna probably show up looking pretty similar, maybe a little bit fuller, a little bit sharper, but I don't see him beating Samson or Hari. And then there is Rubiel, Nexila, who is a total wild card. And I have no idea what to expect from this guy. But in my opinion, top 5 for sure. In case you guys didn't notice, beneath these three names, Hari Chopin, Andrew Jack and Rubiel, there is a writing in red letters that says pending. I have no idea what the hell does this mean. I mean, are, they, are these guys in or out? Why are they on the posters if they haven't confirmed yet? I will assume that they didn't sign the contract yet, but they said they're gonna do it. So they're in the poster. I will count them in. So like I said, Hari Chopin is definitely the favorite to win this show, but do I think he's gonna win it? I mean, it's gonna be really, really hard for Samson to beat him, but I believe it is possible and I think it's going to happen. I believe Samson is already making tremendous progress. You guys saw his physique updates, he already looks crazy, like crazy better. And with Milo Sharchev in his corner, I mean, these guys really know how to utilize post-show rebounds, so I'm expecting Samson bigger, but not necessarily bigger on stage. I expect him more shredded, bigger so he can allow himself, so he can afford to die down all the way and show up shredded. And if Samson does that, with all the muscle he has, with the perfect frame, with height, you know, Arnold Classic, I think they're gonna choose him as the winner. Arnold Classic is usually not all about the freak factor, like Olympia. It's a lot about aesthetics, you know, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger Classic. And we all know what Arnold Schwarzenegger is all about. He was heavily criticizing the guys that didn't look super aesthetic. And Hari, you know, he's very short, he has obviously Sintel in his delts, in his arms. Don't get me wrong, Hadi's front part, I mean, without the arms and the shoulders and the forearms, like his torso, you know, his chest and his abs and his quads, like from the front, that region looks insane, nobody's that freaking ripped. And overall, like, he's pretty complete, pretty big, like, freaky, conditioned always, and I'm expecting him to come in super conditioned, super polished, hungry to win this show, but even though on paper he is the favorite here, I thought it was pretty close to the Mr. Olympia and Samson was really off with conditioning. And I think they're gonna fix that. I think Samson is gonna be much sharper for the Arnold. 
And again, with his stature, with his shape, with his aesthetics, with his classic look, his height and everything, a little bit improved physique, with a little bit improved conditioning, I think it's gonna be enough for him to retain his title, to stay the champion. Maybe I'm wrong, I know Hardy is the favorite, but still, this is the Arnold Classic and Samson is gonna make progress. Hardy will peak perfectly, I have no doubts about that anymore. He proved to everyone that he doesn't miss peaks, basically, but even considering that, I still have Samson as the winner. As far as Andrew Jack, do I see him beating Samson or Hadi? No, no. Does he have the potential to beat these guys and to be the winner? Sure, he has the potential, but it's not gonna happen in 12 weeks from now. He can't make those improvements. He needs to make serious hamstring, glute, back improvements. Actually, back not that much at this point, but he needs better conditioning. And if he loses some size, some fullness, he's gonna look too stringy for these guys, too small. I mean, he's a big guy, but he's like six foot three, so he needs to get bigger, heavier, so he can afford to suffer down to get the conditioning. And then, you know, he's gonna be a threat to everybody, but he doesn't wanna do an off season, so how much progress can he make uh, in only 12 weeks? Since he's first showing in the pro ranks that 2022 uh, Texas Pro, he didn't really make some kind of crazy mass gain. He only peaked differently at different shows, sometimes he's uh, smaller but more shredded, sometimes he's fuller but less conditioned, so I think it's gonna be pretty much same Andrew Jack at the Arnold Classic, and that's definitely not gonna be enough to beat uh, Samson or Hardy, in my opinion, and I think there is a solid chance for the other guys to beat him, for example, Rubiel Muscara, Nexilla. I know, I know he's not the most symmetrical guy, I know he's not the most proportionate guy, but this guy is probably the freakiest guy that we have today. And he made a lot of progress from his last show to this show that he did just now, Prague Pro, so I'm expecting him to come in super conditioned, much better than the last time, and if he does that, you know, he might beat Andrew Jack and actually crack that top three at the Arnold Classic, it's not impossible, guys. I mean, I know I said Arnold Classic is not so much about the freak factor, but he has so much of that freak factor that I don't think he can be ignored. I know Rafael Brandao placed in the top 10 at the Mr. Olympia, but I don't really see him beating Rubiel because this is, however, bodybuilding. Now, Rafael Brandao, he took some time off. I think he didn't compete for an entire year. And he switched coaches. He went from Chris Asito to Neil Hill because he wanted to get bigger. I think he did get bigger, I think he actually made some gains, so if he actually does this prep right and comes in conditioned and is actually bigger, then you know, he's probably, he. I think he's definitely in that top 5, where in the top 5, we'll see, but I think he's definitely one of the top guys at his show. Uh, Horse MD, he was amazing at Romania Pro, I think he is gonna be in that top 6 potentially, I think it's gonna be between him and James Hollingshead. The only reason why I don't like a horse MD is because of his back double bicep. It's super flat, there is no pop, there is no weed taper in that pose. That's gonna hurt him a lot, but if he fixes that somehow with posing maybe, or makes some kind of improvements, and show up, it shows up pretty much the same like he did Romania, then yeah, maybe he can crack that top 5, but honestly, I would rather bet on James Hollins head. This guy is a mass monster, like he is one of the bigger guys in the IBB. He competes at like... 275, something like that, and he had an entire year off, so he's gonna probably come in bigger, and with Milos Sharto in his corner, I know he's gonna bring good conditioning, but more importantly, he's gonna come in really big and really full, and with all the muscle that he's packing, and that's like some real muscle that he basically built by lifting super heavy, you guys know that he's super strong, so he has that, that dense, that mature kind of muscle, if that is super full and also very shredded, you know, that's gonna be really crazy, so I think he is more likely to crack that top 6 rather than Horse MD, but Horse MD has a really beautiful shape, really beautiful aesthetics, and also, like, some really dominant body parts, like quads, like hamstrings, like, you know, a really good V taper, so we'll see, that's gonna be a really good battle. As far as the other 5 guys, or 6 if you include the last year's amateur winner, 
yeah, I don't know who's going to place where. I would probably say uh, Akeem Williams or uh, John De La Rosa, then Justin Rodriguez, then Mohamed Shaban, then Anton Weant, and in the end, the amateur winner. So there you go, guys. That's your list. Uh, it's going to be really exciting. We'll see if somebody is not going to be able to compete or if somebody is going to jump in. And I think it's very possible that this list will change. It will most likely change. And I gotta tell you, I was really disappointed when I didn't see Martin Fitzwater at this lineup because I know that he applied and we can see his physique updates from November, basically from a month ago, but he continued prepping and I heard, I didn't see the most recent photos, but they're saying that he looks crazy right now. So he applied and he wasn't accepted here. I mean, I get that most of these guys have bigger names than Martin Fitzwater, but... Honestly, I'm pretty sure Martin Fitzwater at his best, let's say his Texas Pro version, I think he beats half of these guys right here. I don't know if you guys remember, but last year at the Texas Pro, Martin Fitzwater really pushed Andrew Jack. In my opinion, he destroyed him from the back. He absolutely killed him in both back double and back lat pose. Sure, Andrew beat him from the front, but it was very comparable. Martin came in super shredded and for his small frame, he is really massive, you know. He's a shorter guy, but he packs a lot of muscle on that frame and he has a lot of quality, if you ask me. And that show, he really peaked well. He was prepped by Branch Warren. So I was looking forward to seeing him finally back on stage, but I guess New York Pro and whatever else show is gonna do, not the Arnold Classic, unfortunately. In my opinion, once again, he beats half of those guys, if you ask me, if he comes in looking like this, with this freaking back, he can you know, potentially even crack the top six, but no, no, it's not gonna happen, maybe if some of the guys pull out and he jumps in, maybe, that's very possible, you guys know that the list always changes, it never really stays the same from beginning to the end, so we'll see, but yeah, I would love to see Martin Fitzwater in that lineup. And what about Nick Walker? Why Nick Walker isn't getting any softer or fatter? He remains super shredded and super hard. And it's been how many? Six weeks since the Mr. Olympia. Why is this? Why? I, I don't see it. I mean, is he doing this just because he likes the way he looks? I mean, you guys know that it's not easy to keep your physique at its peak for a long time. It's definitely not very easy and he's doing that very successfully. And you guys can imagine what that requires. You know, it requires a certain sacrifice. It requires you to, to eat a certain way, to train a certain way, and to use certain things. So why is Nick doing this? Just to look good in the gym? I don't know. It doesn't really make sense to me. Maybe, maybe very possibly, he's gonna jump into the Arnold Classic. If he wanted to, he could just call the guys and say I'm in. And you guys know what he did last year. He was out originally. And then he decided to jump in after they increased the prize money. So maybe, just maybe, he is waiting for an incentive. He is waiting for an offer. Maybe he is gonna jump in after they increase the prize money to 350000 You know, that's very, very possible. I mean, I would do that. I mean, he can just jump in whenever he wants to. He doesn't have to announce it. He doesn't have to be in the original list. He can decide whenever he likes to. And, you know, maybe they're going to increase the prize money if he's considering jumping in. And once again, he remains super shredded, super full. He's at his peak right now. Look at this freaking guy. If he jumped in... I would predict him winning it. I think he's on that level now that it doesn't really matter if he's not super classic, if he's not tall enough and stuff like that. I think he has too much freak factor, man. I think he progressed so much last year. I think he's too complete, more complete than Hardy, bigger than Hardy, more conditioned even probably. You know, with all that, all that freak factor. And we saw his legs in that guest posing. He's fine. His injury is fine, he's recovered, he can train his legs, he can train whatever, he can show up looking his absolute best for the Arnold Classic. I understand if he wants to take some time off to improve for the Mr. Olympia because he really wants to win it. You know, it made sense when Derek did it last year and, you know, it paid off, 
Maybe that's the plan. If it is, that's fine. But I don't know if he would be staying this freaking shredded, this dry, this hard for no reason. For an off season. Just to look good in the off season. No, no. I don't think so. I don't buy it. I think he's gonna jump in. It's very possible. After missing the Olympia, he has an itch to scratch. And Arnold Classic is just around the corner. 12 weeks from now, even less. So, I'm betting on Nick Walker jumping in any day now. What do you guys think? If that's gonna happen, tell me in the comment section down below. What do you think about the lineup? Who do you think is gonna win? Who's gonna place where? Whatever is on your mind, guys, please let me know down below in the comment section. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more videos about the Arnold Classic, as the Arnold Classic approaches, I'm gonna make a ton of videos and I'm gonna cover the Arnold Classic and all that. So, guys, stay tuned. Please subscribe. Help me reach that 50k mark. Thank you guys so much. See you soon. All the best and bye bye.